In this video, I'll show you how to make a film border like this one using Photoshop. But unlike many tutorials, we won't be downloading someone else's film border to use as an overlay. We'll be drawing our film border from scratch using only the tools in Photoshop. To demonstrate the steps, I've opened the image I want to add the film border to. The first thing to do is to add a new empty layer to the image by clicking the plus icon at the bottom of the layers panel. We can then rename the layer to be Film Edge. Next, select the Rectangular Marquee tool from the Tools palette on the left of the interface. Because the Rectangular Marquee is part of a group of several other tools, the icon for one of those might actually be visible instead. If you can't see the icon you want, click on the Visible icon in the group which is next to the top. When you do this, hold down your mouse button and after a second the other tools in the group will be displayed. You can then select the rectangular marquee tool from the list. The next step is to draw inside the image using the marquee tool. Position the mouse pointer a small way inside the edge of the image. The gap you leave is what will be creating the film border or edge. When the mouse is in position, click and drag. As you drag, you'll see a dotted line appear, which is the marquee selection. When you have a selection inside the image, release the mouse button. Don't worry if you don't get the film border spread evenly around the edge. We can easily move it into position using the mouse pointer. All we need to do is move the mouse pointer over the selection and the icon will change. We can then click and drag to move the selection to center it on the image. Once the selection is in place, we then need to invert it, so that it selects the outer edge of the image rather than inside the image. To do this, click the Select menu and then the Invert option. By inverting it, we've selected a thin strip that can act like a border. With the border selection in place, we now need to fill the area with black. To do this, click the Paint Bucket tool. If you can't see the tools icon, one of the other tools in the group may be visible instead. To select any of the tools in the group, press G on your keyboard. You'll then see the icon for whichever tool is selected. Click this now and hold down the mouse button again. Then, when the other tools in the group are displayed, you can select the Paint Bucket tool. The next step is to set the paint colour to black. An easy way to do this is to press D on your keyboard. This resets the foreground and background paint colours to be their default, which are black and white. Having chosen black, we can now click on the selection to fill the area with black. Then clear the active selection by clicking the Select menu and the Deselect option. We now have a black border around the image on a separate layer that we can hide and display. Now we need to add some text to the film border that we might see along the edge of a medium format film. For this example, we'll be simulating the Fuji Velvia film edge. To add the text, we'll use the horizontal type tool in the Photoshop tools palette. If you can't see the icon, press T on your keyboard to select the group. You can then click and hold the mouse pointer on the visible icon in the group. When the other tools in the group appear, select the horizontal type tool. We can then configure the tool to use a suitable font. Something like Arial with a regular weight is fine, but you'll see how to change this in a moment. We also want to use a suitable colour for the text. I'll use white to start, as it's easy to see when setting everything up. Click once on the image, and the sample text will appear in a text field. We can then type the words Fuji, followed by some spaces, and the letters RVP. After that, click the tick icon in the toolbar to apply the text. You should now see the new text layer added to the image in the Layers panel. When the text is selected, you'll also see the text properties in the Properties panel. This is where we can change the font, size and colour of the text. I'll be using a font size of 24 for this image and I'll set the weight to bold which looks a lot better. Also, the text on the Fuji film border is orange, so I want to change the colour to that as well. All I need to do is click the colour swatch and then choose an orange hue from the slider. I can then position the marker on the swatch to choose the saturation and lightness. When the text is looking about right, we'll use the move tool to move it into place on the film border. 
This is the top icon in the Tools palette. We can then click on the text and drag it into position. Now I want to create the frame numbers using the horizontal type tool again. I want to use the same settings for this as the other text that I've added. I then need to click on the image to add the default text. Then, once I've done that, I can enter the frame number as 10. Typically, a triangular arrow appears after the frame number on a medium format film border. To draw that, we'll use the triangular tool from the tools palette, which is in the group with the shortcut U. As with the other group tools we've looked at, you can click and hold on the icon to display the tools in the group. We can then click and drag on the image to draw the shape. This needs to be a tall but thin triangle. We also want it to be filled with the same orange as the other text. After drawing the triangle, I want to rotate it through 90 degrees so that it's lying on its side and pointing left. We can do this by positioning our mouse pointer above the triangle and when the pointer shows a curved arrow, click and drag. Keep holding down the mouse button while you rotate the triangle. Then when it's in place, release the mouse button. To make it easier to see, let's magnify the image now. Then, using the Move tool, drag the triangle into position on the right side of the frame number. These two elements always appear together on a film border, so let's link them. To do this, select both layers in the Layers panel by clicking while holding down the Command key on a Mac. On a Windows PC, that's the Control key. Now, right-click on one of the layers and select the Link Layers option in the pop-up menu. Once linked, we can drag the layers into position between the Fuji and RVP lettering. The next step is optional, but we're going to duplicate the frame marker by selecting both layers. We can do this by clicking the layers while holding down the Command key, which is the Control key on a PC. When both layers are selected, right-click on one of the layers and choose the Duplicate Layer option. We can then move the duplicate frame counter into position on the right side of the frame. We're doing this because the frame numbering on a 120 medium format film assumes that the images use a square format rather than rectangular. Because of this, you then get two frame numbers on most of the frames. The other thing that we'll need to do is change the frame number to 11 using the horizontal type tool. After selecting it in the tools palette, click on the number and change it to 11. If we now look at the entire image, the film border looks good, but it also seems too perfect. We now need to soften the edge and the text so that it doesn't appear quite as crisp. Before doing this, I recommend converting the layers to a smart object to preserve the original film border. First, click on the top layer to select it, and then hold down the Shift key on your keyboard and click the bottom layer. With all the layers that make up the film border selected, click the Filter menu and choose the Convert for Smart Filters option. When this is complete, we see a single smart object which we can rename Film Border. We can then apply a filter to the smart object to blur the contents. With the smart object selected, click the Film menu and then the Blur submenu. The blur filter that we want to use for this is the Gaussian Blur. Then, in the dialog, set the level of the blur. Something around 4 usually softens the film border and text without blurring it too much. And because we've applied the blur filter to the smart object, we can continue to change it. We can then easily copy the smart object to other images to add the same film border to those as well. Now, if you don't use smart objects very often, you may be wondering what they are. In that case, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and please visit my website for more tutorials. I'll see you soon for another video.